When the big day finally arrives, the expectation of every bride is not only to be joined with her Prince Charming, but also to have that fairy tale wedding she has always dreamt about. One of the most memorable days for a woman is her wedding day, and she wants it all to be perfect. From the food, to the guests, her dress, to her makeup, the visuals, to the music, everything has to be just right. But what does it take to make everything perfect? Well, discussing this with me today is Funke Bokno Obruthe, the MD CEO of the Fire Events, and the author of the lovely book, the Essential Bridal Handbook. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's, it's, it's lovely to have you here. We know that you are very busy. We are planning weddings all over the nation <laughs> and the continent and the universe. So thank you for being here. It's now, a you're a wedding planner. What inspired you to write a bridal handbook in the first place? OK, well, having planned over mm. hundreds and hundreds of weddings, I realized that a lot of brides, or even people that were not um, our own clients, were always asking me questions. Where can I get this? How can mm. I do this? What do I need to do if I need to um, get my makeup? You know, and then nobody had, there was no directory. And then there was also nowhere for a bride to write her thoughts, her journal. Yeah. So I said, you know what, why don't, you, why don't I come up with a book that has tips, that has journals, that has even everything. And then, yes, that was just it. exactly, that was the reason why the book was written. But I found it interesting because using this book, I almost do not need a wedding planner. Mm -hmm. So was it supposed to be a DIY book? And didn't you think by the time they have this book, they won't call me to plan their weddings again? <laughs> well, the thing is, the thought crossed my mind a bit. But I realized that there are a lot of planners in America that have books and people still call okay. them. So I said, you know what, it doesn't matter. Because even my colleagues, other wedding planners are in the book. Yeah. And Which was also very interesting. I mean, you know what, everybody, there's so many people getting married and everybody's gonna use who they want to use. But what it was, was, was a guide for a bride. So for example, you meet your wedding planner, it would even give you ideas of questions to, to ask, ask your, your planner. Questions that you would ask, even your photographers, your videographers. Mm. So things that you can ask them. So you could choose to have a planner. You, if you don't want to have a planner, you want to plan it yourself, you can use the book. So that was just the idea. So on this day, the man comes, he kneels down, gives me, you know, that big rock. Yay, I'm getting married. Where do I start from as a bride? <laughs> I would say that the first thing is just, first of all, relax. <laughs> uh, like, get off that emotional, romantic, high. high, because it's a high, you're just like floating. Just come down to reality and say, you know what, what needs to be done? Mm -hmm. And then the first thing, because one of the, you know, the things I wrote, even on my YouTube series, Funke says, I, I would say, now that you are married, what next? What next? What's next? I mean, the first thing is to say, okay, what kind of wedding do I want to have? Do I want to have a small wedding, a big wedding? How many guests do I want to have at this wedding? Is the wedding going to be in Nigeria? Is it going to be outside? You know? So um, who's going to be involved in the wedding? Um, how much time do I need? So mm. if I want to get married in October, or maybe do I need a year if I want to have the desired venue I want? So those are the things. You need to start asking those questions. And then I would always say that the first thing as well is also sit down with the parents. Sit down ask, with the parents. Sit down with the parents. Ask them what their ideas are. Parents have their own ideas and you have yours. So you may be thinking you want to just do 20 guests. Your parents think, la, la, there's 1,000 guests. You know, but that always makes me, you know, and in our society, and I think it's everywhere, it's really like, whose wedding is it? Is it my wedding or my mother's <laughs> wedding? You know, there's a joke that says, um, a, 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 like a girl had a toss with her mom and her mom said, this is my wedding. Yes. Then your daughter's wedding is your, your own wedding. Wedding. <laughs> wedding. You know, the thing is, I always say that you should always try and find a balance. Hmm. Your parents, are too excited, they're happy. 
They want everybody to come and share in that joy. That's the reason why they have big weddings. It's not because they want to spend a lot of money. It's because they just want people to come. Ah, oh, mommy, marry. <laughs> they just want people to see and experience the joy. And we have a culture in Nigeria where our culture is about bringing people. We're very Together. inclusive. That's our culture. We love to celebrate. So that's it. Somebody's having a baby dedication, there's a crowd. Yes, Somebody's everything. You know, everything. So our parents are like that. But what is happening right now is that our parents are saying that the children have a say. Let them have a say. So sometimes there's a bit of compromise. Mm. So there are many things in your wedding that you can let your parents handle. You can decide to enjoy some parts of your wedding. So for example, I always tell people, your first dance, the yes. after party, you can create it. The food you want to serve, you know, how you want your friends to sit. There's so many different ways. So let the parents have their crowd. And some even know, now do like a pre-wedding dinner. Exactly. Just my Where's friends. Where's your intimate, your friends, exactly. So that wedding reception. So just come, there are many ways to do it. I always tell people that don't, Get you know, like people get oh the ivy. My mother chose the ivy. Ignore that one. Look at other things that you can control. Look at what you can control. Leave what you can't control. That's, That's one so major good. advice. Yes. But when did it, it seems like these days weddings come with so much drama and pomp and pageantry? Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I was getting married, my sister said, when I was getting married, I sat in front of the mirror. I did my makeup myself. Yes. When did all of you even have to have makeup artists? How did the industry change that weddings became such a big event? First thing is technology. I mean, you have Instagram, you have um, social media. Mm. So everybody wants to let people know that they are getting married. That's number one. <laughs> number two, you have a lot of people now that are very exposed. who are not as exposed. A lot of people have come. I mean, years when it evolved, which is about seven, eight years ago, when it started evolving. Yes. This were people coming in, they had gone to school abroad. Yeah, they were coming back and saying, in America, this is how it works. In England, this is how we do it. And then they're coming to tell their parents. Ah, and then parents are like, okay, oh, where was that? Kuku send these children. Exactly. That's what Kuku listen to them. So really, what it is, is that it's all about what is happening right now in the society. There's a lot going on all over the world. Mm -hmm. And social media is playing a major, major part, part. Of it. That's it, social media. Social media. More we can get back and everything when we come back. You want to get married, your dream wedding, you need to hear what she has to say. We'll be right back. You are welcome back to Chapters. Today is the wedding episode. As we're talking about all things weddings, all things beautiful, pink, yellow, red colors. And I'm still talking to CEO, MD, Sapphire Events, Funke Bokno Obuthe. So we've been talking weddings, weddings, what to do, what not to do. Now let's get into the wedding proper. Yes. And in chapter two of your book, you said, what kind of bride am I? Mm -hmm. I do not even know there are different types of brides. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the different types? So that for a bride watching who like me, I would not have been able to answer that question. Mm. What are the, how would you determine the kind of bride that you are? There are a few questions you'll just ask yourself. Like, um, there's some brides that are very traditional. So they want the okay. traditional cake, okay. they want the, wear the white dress, they, yeah, they just do the things you. traditional. They'll do the ceremony the way mm. it should be done. They're very traditional, they don't like drama. Some brides are adventurous. So they I'm would wear the pink now. dress. Okay. They would get the bridesmaids and wear black and pink. Things that they would tell you is not working in our culture. They are the ones that can come into the venue on a horse. That's the adventurous bride, yes. That's a know. serious matter. Yes. So there are different types of brides. There's the romantic bride, the bride that just wants candles when she comes into the hall. Petals. The music that she will hear mm. when people are coming, she's just listening and she's just like, oh. <laughs> There are different kinds of people. So our personality would determine the kind of wedding that you would that have. You and would that have. which is why I said that your personality cannot tell you reflect the kind of wedding mm. you want. Yes. Another interesting thing I find is colours. Yes. When you get that ivy, you now see ah I've, I've, I got one. Aqua lemon <laughs> tangerine blue. I mean I'm being over, but I just thought <laughs> what happened to the days of yellow and green? green. Ah. Orange and red. Wow. <laughs> In fact, now it's the men I pity the most. They're like, what is the people have come with? Aquamarine <laughs> yellow. yellow. What are they, how do you determine color patterns? And then also sometimes, because there's the groom and you're trying to balance, maybe the, do you have to balance the bride's family color with the groom's family color? Do you have to put all those things in consideration? 
Okay, I'm happy you're asking me this question because one episode that I did for my YouTube series was how to choose your wedding colors. Mm -hmm. And what it is is that the different elements. You can decide to have different colors. So the bride's family can have their own color. The groom's family can have their own color. And you don't have to blend. It doesn't have to blend. Okay. The only thing you can do is that on the day of the event, you have to make sure that you have neutral colors. So you have to choose a oh. color that can actually neutralize the two or pick only one color out of all those two colors that you are going to use. Okay. So, for example, on the day, if somebody picks yellow, somebody picks blue. On the day of the wedding, for your decor, you can have white. You Instead can have, of trying to mix yellow yes, and blue. there's no need. Uh -huh. Just have ivory, uh -huh. creams, uh -huh. and then you can have accents of those colors. So what do I mean? Your flowers can be a little bit of yellow. Okay. You can have a little bit of blue napkins on the table. Do you understand? As the guests come in, maybe the walkway they walk through is yellow. So you can actually pick elements of the color. But you don't have to, everything will not, it doesn't have to be loud. Yellow. Yes. No, yellow. No. That was, we used to do that 10 yes. years ago. I saw one throw back picture. I said, uh, uh, they'll say yellow and blue. You decorate in yellow and blue. Uh -huh. For what? So really, things have changed. You know, now you're realizing that you don't have to do all those things. Yes. We've come a very long way. We have, we have, We've we have, come we have. and things keep evolving yes. and evolving yes. and evolving. Mm. Now, I got to an interesting part that I liked. Trends. Mm. And I think at that time you wrote this book, the trend was destination weddings. Yes, hmm. yes. Trends keep changing. Mm -hmm. Who sets these trends? First things to do. <laughs> Somebody just wakes up on there and says, you know, maybe, um, and then before you know it, it becomes a pattern. Yes. I think that first of all, the trends are set, first of all, international standards set the trends. So for That's example, they'll tell you the color of the year is cinnamon. You are very right. Everybody will not be picking cinnamon. And every wedding that year, is as if everybody just yes. dreams yes. the same way. You now yes. have... Mm -hmm. Ten yellow ashwabis. Mm -hmm. like, I don't want mm -hmm. to get only have five yellow. Mm -hmm. oh, so wow. sometimes international, but sometimes we're, we're actually now setting trends in Nigeria. Hmm? So you have a wedding reception, but you create a theme. So themed weddings are becoming a trend. Oh. So you theme the wedding and make it as destination like as possible. As possible. So that's a trend that is coming up right now in Nigeria. Then a lot of special effects, low fog. Sparklers, hmm. fireworks on the beach, the, all kinds of things. Hmm. That one is another trend. So people are going crazy. I have brides calling us, telling us, I want my wedding. If I, a bride will tell me, I want my wedding to be on Bella Niger. So I want my wedding to be trending. Please, <coughs> what can I put on my wedding that will make everybody talk about my wedding? <laughs> that is it. So a lot of people, you know, are trying to look at different things that they can do and they can I use to make people just talk I about their wedding. Love and then, of course, hashtags. You yes. cannot have a wedding without a hashtag. Yes. There must be a hashtag. And the more creative you can be, the, the better. better for you. I'm telling you. What's the so, most creative hashtag you've heard? Ah, one was, you know, sometimes when you have a hashtag that says something like maybe becoming, you know, the sense. person, or you, you take the person's name, maybe like a TKO, you and know. You form, you, yes, you form, I mean, like my sister's own was Yoru French. You know, so, yeah, hashtags like that. So just the more creative you can be, the more people are going to talk, the more your wedding is going to trend. It's about trending. It's about, I think that's the trend. The trend is trending. trending. The trend, I love yes. that. The trend is trending. Yeah. Interesting. In chapter five, in this checklist, I, when I saw it, I said, no, this is too long a checklist. <laughs> but it is so well thought out. Mm -hmm. Everything from one year, what you do from 12 to six months to six to three months is there. Do you really need to check all? They just seem like a lot. You see, the checklist is a guide. And what it does is, so that you don't forget anything, it's easy to forget a lot of things. And there are some things that we take for granted. So for example, the bride can tell you, um, you know what, I don't need to um, maybe print my invitation cards early. Why? Why must I? But they forget that there's a process. It, the process mm. to choose the design. The process for them to approve the invitation cards. The process for them to print. And then the process for, them, for you to start distributing. It's about four. So you need stages. time. And then especially when you go and use a, an invitation card company that is very busy. They may be there. So you're not finding yourself scrambling and running up and down to try and distribute. Meanwhile, that, that's, that's what makes a lot of brides get stressed. Wow. So by the time you do it in advance and you've already planned and you've gone through your checklist, you won't be as stressed. So that's why that checklist is a, is a lot. But it it's actually very, very helpful. But your checklist starts from 12 to 6 months before. Does that assume that you need about a year to plan a wedding? Assuming. Before, you, you needed a year. You can plan a wedding in three months. You, what usually happens is that there are some things you need. And there are some things you want. Maybe all your life you've dreamed that a particular band will play at your wedding. You need yes. a year to book, to them, book them. Because they may be very popular. So that's why we always say, give it a year. 
you know, for mm. you to, to get the, the dream that the dream you, the dream one that you, you really want. want. But you can say, you know what, I don't care about the band, though. It can be any band. That dream I had was years ago. It's okay. Let us get another band. So it just depends. Mm. You know, a lot of people just need time. You need time. Maybe for people that are coming in out of Nigeria, you want them to be able to have planned their yes. trip. You don't want, you want them to have saved. That's why usually it's good to give people a, a lot of a notice. Lot of notice. But they, I mean, there are many people. There's so many people that do cakes, that do desserts, that yeah. do drinks. So you can call anybody. Yeah, we've planned a wedding. If I plan a wedding in two months, mm. two months. Ah, all you need is venue. Okay, you need money. Venue. Mm -hmm. Talking about venue, it seems venues are booked two years before. <laughs> if you want to get married in seven months, I, I think there's just some like, maybe popular venues. I don't know. And you yes, go there, there are a lot of popular They're venues. almost booked from now till yeah. December. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On an average, how many people get married a month or a year in Nigeria, for example, mm. or in Lagos? Wow. Ah, my it's goodness. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of people, and you still don't even have enough. In, on the island alone, you have about, let's say you have about 20 venues. Yeah. And I know that every weekend they're usually booked. So, and if we, and we plan a wedding, we plan at least five weddings a month, at least. At least five. That we we plan a wedding. A in, yeah, so we plan a wedding, a wedding a week. week. Yes. So if we are planning that, and there's so many planners, and there's so many people that don't even use planners, there must imagine. be, I'm sure there must be over a thousand weddings in this Nigeria. And even in Lagos. Because there are some locations that even me have never heard of. Now, yeah, that somebody got married, I'm like, hey, how? You know? But people are marrying. Ah, so people they're, they're, are marrying at a married. very high rate. Yes, people are getting married. Weddings, lovely. There's a chapter in your book that you said something. The one about beauty and wellness. And you're yes. talking about the need to be in the right shape. And for women, it's very important. So mm -hmm. that maybe if you got your dress six months ago, you would still fit into it. But I always thought stress would be a weight loss Thing. But you wrote here, you said the added stress of planning does indeed make it harder to lose weight. Okay, well, you know, everybody deals with stress in different ways. Some mm. people lose weight, some people don't. Some will eat more. Some will eat more. And then, you know, even with that, there are different things. I mean, that's when you need a sugar rush. You want to drink. Because like you me. think you're burning so much yes. energy. So exactly. So I a lot of people, so when you are stressed or when you are going through the wedding plans, it can be a bit stressful. So that's what I'm saying. That it's always good to kind of make sure that your your beauty, your wellness, you're drinking loads of water. You're just ensuring that you're in the right space, even mentally as well. You know, when you're planning. Yes. That's very interesting. And still on beauty, what helps determine even your choice of makeup and even your choice of your hairstyle? How would you know? And you know, you talked about going to see whether your chosen makeup artist yes. is beforehand and mm -hmm. testing. How would you know I want the colors yellow, red, blue? This, this, this. Okay, I think the first thing is, when you determine the kind of bride you are, some brides, I have a bride that said to me, I want to almost look like myself. I don't want to look too different. I need a makeup artist that will achieve that look. Mm. Some people will say, you know what? All my life, when I was getting married, I wanted that my lips would be red. I don't want nude. All that I want nude, I used to do it. I want red today because I'm the Wedding. center of attraction. Everybody de depends. So it depends on, so, but there's a whole look. So from your dress, what kind of dress are you going to wear? That will also determine the kind of hairstyle, mm. the kind of makeup you would have, the t even your shoes. So it's, that's wow. why it's always good to consult with your makeup artist or even your hairstylist and look at different styles and even the shape of your face or what kind of tiara you would wear, what kind of hair accessory are you going to put in your hair? It's, it's all that it's will be determined by exactly your hairstyle, your makeup and all that. So it's a one, it's all in one, yes. Does body shape determine dress style? Oh, of course. You have to know your, 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 your shape. It will determine whether you have to wear a tool dress, whether you have to wear a ball gown, whether you can wear a slim fitting dress, whether you can wear a shift dress. You know, it just, it, 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 ah, please. The body shape is very you, you It seems this is very no, dear to very, your heart very, because very, you've had so many. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. So many things with Nigerian weddings. Yes. We have to go on a break now. Weddings, weddings, weddings. We can never stop talking about weddings. We'll be right back. <laughs> wow, well, I have been having so much fun with Funke Bokno with the talking about weddings. We can never get enough of Nigerian weddings. And one thing that people will not forgive us if we don't talk about is Ashwebi, the Ashwebi culture. I think that Ashwebi, the Ashwebi syndrome is really 
about uniformity. We like uniformity. We want everybody to say that we're all together. And it makes the pictures nice. Yes, it does. It, it actually does. But nowadays as well, people are also looking at, people are actually being considerate and saying, you know what, instead of taking maybe the full outfit, take the gele alone, yes. or getting lower cost, yes. you know, or, or just taking one part of it. So people are being, it's not as, it's not as, um, 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 do, it's not a do or die affair as anymore. It used to yes, be. As it used to be. Yeah. There's one interesting thing you put in your book, and you talked about the gift registry. Yes. And I really like that. And, you know, it's a case of, so if you want, you can tell people that you want these particular types of okay. wedding gifts. Yes. But I also like that you wrote that also many consider it offensive for couples who decide what gifts they want for their wedding. Pay, will you now tell us? Exactly. So how do you manage that? Because, like you said, you don't want 10 people to give you 10 pots or mm -hmm. blenders or something. Mm -hmm. How do you manage that? You have to start the process early. Hmm. And you have to make it as polite as, as possible. possible. You know, just let people understand that you're starting a new home and you don't want to have the same thing. That's why you're actually doing this. And you're actually making it considerate for them so that you don't throw their gifts away. So, yeah, because we usually find out that you throw these gifts away. So, it's once you let people, once you, you see, the thing about people is that what is, in Nigeria, what I realize is that a lot of things are new. Hmm. And the more you do them, they will become the norm. Because we're, not, we're used to doing That's things in a certain way. That is it. We're used to doing things in a certain way. You can't blame us now. Do you understand? So, I mean, this wedding industry, it's just a, like a 10-year-old yes. industry. Yes. Meanwhile, this industry has been in existence yes. since over 40 years, 50 years in America and England. So once you keep on doing it, and then you let people see, it will become the norm. Hmm. Interesting. Now, the MC. Mm -hmm. I'm going to a lot of, I said, what kind of MC is this? What should you look? No, some, sometimes it's, they even some just say things they should not say. Mm. What should you look out for? How would you even know that this MC is prim and proper? So I, I think it's trying to answer prim and proper, but funny. Yes. How what? How do you know the type of MC to look out for? You you have to do your research. Now Instagram is good because it gives you an opportunity to see them do their work. Uh, and then you ask the people pic as well who are the event. How did he do? How did he speak? Some MCs can't pronounce words properly. Some can't even pronounce the couple's name well. <coughs> I don't know why they're there. Yes. You understand? You should have practiced. You can't pronounce it well or you'll be calling the chairman another name. You know, that's really unprofessional. Mm -hmm. So you need to really, really do your research. Ask them, how did they do? Were they, you know, some MCs are very funny. Some are not. Some are very um, prim and proper. proper. They do it. This is the way it will be done from beginning to end. They don't have time for jokes. Some MCs, they can play games. So you have to determine what kind of MC you want. You want. Do you understand? Do you want someone that will just be prim and proper throughout, mm. or someone that will just come and make you, you and your friends have fun, make you laugh, you know, make the people laugh. You know, some MCs can be very crass as well. And they'll they, exactly. they don't, they don't want that. They look at the environment and crack really <laughs> terrible jokes, which is why research is good. Ask people. Ask people that have been married or that have done their weddings or they've gone for events. Ah, this MC, I'm planning on using him. How was he at your own wedding? Ah, he did very well. He spoke well. Ah, but he said this, this, this. Oh, the research is good. Research. <laughs> okay. And after all is said and done, the day has come and gone. Mm -hmm. Then the next step, mm -hmm. honeymoon spot yes. of life. Yes. <laughs> yes. For you, what would be your top three fun honeymoon spots? Ooh. <laughs> Now, in Nigeria, I would say that, like the yeah. The fact that you started yes. with in Nigeria. Oh, definitely. In because, Nigeria. Yes, in Nigeria. We have a lot of uh, um, spots. You can go to the, Ob the, the, the Obudukal Obudu Tour Ranch. You can go there. You can go to Tinapa. There are many places in Nigeria mm. that you can go to for your honeymoon. You can go to Ekwe Resorts. There are many places. Mm. And then, but of course, outside Africa, like in Africa as well, you can go to Mauritius. Yes. You don't need a visa. You have still noted that in your book. Yes. That there's so many African spots yes, there are. that people can yes, go that you to. you can go to, exactly. So in Mauritius, you can go to Kenya. I mean, of course, with all the... But you can definitely go to Kenya. You can go to Ghana. Like, for example, when I got married, I went to Benin Republic because nice. I, could, I was going to work. No, let me tell you. I was <laughs> going to do an event. And my husband said there must be only moon by force, whether you like it or not. So we had to quickly go to Benin Republic for two days. Then I went out because I had an event the next in two days after, you know. So I did that. But yeah, then after that, we now went to South Africa. Africa. Then yeah. we went to South Africa. So Cape Town is very good as well. Cape Town mm. is Cape Town is fantastic, you know. And then so seashells. There are just so many places. So I would say my top three. I would say. I mean, I love people that have said Equa Resort. They've been there. I haven't been to Equa Resort, but I've heard it's really it's nice. Really nice. Um, so I would say that for Nigeria, and I would also say that of course um, for. 
um, Africa, uh, Mauritius. Mauritius. Oh, Mauritius. So, <laughs> and these are things that people can world. also go on a budget because there's a genuine, yes. we want to have a nice one. Yes. But you know, oh, oh, yes, we don't want to spend too much, too much exactly. Money on Those that. are destinations as well that also realize that you need the honeymoon. So they prepare for you. They give you good deals. There are many travel agents that are ready to give you a lot of good deals as well. Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What are your top three color combinations? Ah, hmm. top three. Hmm. I love blue. Okay. I love blue. I think any shade of blue with silver. I actually blue love that. Silver. Yes, I, I really like that. I like I like the neutrals. I like the creams. I like hmm. the golds. I like the ivories. I think they're really nice and you can play with it. And then I, I actually love pink. Uh, pink is very girly, <laughs> but very I actually girly. I love pink. I, I, I love rose pink. I love the blushes. I love you yes. I love color I love pink. rose pink, blush pink, <laughs> fuchsia pink, shade pink. Yes, All yes, the pinks yes. in the world. I love pink. We've talked about the wedding, the wedding, the wedding. The wedding is one day. The marriage is a lifetime. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to, and you actually have your last chapter, you talk about the future. What advice would you give to brides and even grooms, mm. you know, in order to just keep the marriage, like you said, keep the sparks alive? Alive, yes. Okay, well, of course, um, I would say that the first thing is that when you get married, you're in, the reality has hit. All the ceremonies have gone, and you're like there, and you're like thinking, hey, how are we going to make this work? Um, I would say communication. I would say that, you know, not taking each other for granted. Mm. And this is for both parties, mm. not taking each other for granted. And even because, like, for example, the, the women, you know, do things that you used to do, just keep on doing them. And do the them men, better. Yes, and the men as well, do them. Don't say, oh, I'm now married. I've married her now. Yeah, I don't care. I'm not going to do. No. So don't take each other for granted. Keep on communicating, understanding, compromise, mm. sacrifice. There's mm. a lot of sacrifice involved. There's a lot of forgiveness. You must yes. keep on forgiving and forgiving and, and forgiving. That's okay. It's been lovely having you here. Where can we get this book? We can get it in different shops. You can get it at um, the Palms, all the shopping complexes, uh, Terra Culture, and then you can get it online as well. There's also an online version of the book as well oh, that you nice. can download on iBooks, on Amazon as well. So you can get it on Amazon as well. You can get the books on Amazon. I, um, iBooks, Kindle, you can get the book. And then we're co also coming up with an app. So the app is this. used, yeah, we'll soon launch the app of the book. Yes. So you don't have to be in Nigeria. Anywhere you are, the essential bridal handbook, you need to get it. Thank you for being such a lovely, it's amazing a guest. It's been thank a you. And thank you all so much for watching. Weddings are a fabulous thing to plan, but they can be very hectic if you don't have your planning right. It is necessary that you get your planning right so that that special day can be certainly a special day. And after that special day, remember, keep the sparks alive. Thank you for watching, and until the next episode, God bless you.